Okay, we're working on intermediate algebra uh, section 1.2 and this is going to be video part B. Alright, if you're following along in your book, this is page 24. We're going to talk about parallel perpendicular or neither. Um, on the bottom of page 24, there's an image. Um, the first image has two parallel lines. If you inspect the slope of those two lines, you're going to find that they both have a slope of 1. So parallel lines have slopes that are equal. Okay. Parallel lines have equal slopes. Um, next to that, there's an image of two lines that cross something like this. Again, if you inspect those lines, you'll find that they make a right angle, and that's what we call perpendicular lines. They make a light right angle. If you inspect those slopes, you'll find one of them is a slope of 2, and one of them is a slope of negative 1 half. Uh, what's the relationship between those slopes? Perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite signs, one's positive, one's negative, and the, the numbers are also reciprocals. So perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. They have opposite signs, and the numbers are reciprocals. Two and one half are reciprocals. One's positive, one's negative. They never have the same sign. They always have p opposite signs. One has to be positive, one's negative, and the lines are all the numbers are also reciprocals. Um, in the third image, which you see is marked as neither parallel or perpendicular, uh, there's a line that looks something like this and another line that looks something like this. Um, if you inspect the slopes, uh, this one has a slope of 2, this one has a slope of 1. These are neither parallel or perpendicular. In other words, their slopes really have no relationship at all. So parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposites and reciprocals, and these lines that are neither parallel or perpendicular have no relationship between the slopes. So looking at example 12 on the top of page 25, the question asks us to determine if the two lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So line 1 is y equals negative 3x plus 7 and line 2 is y equals 1 third x minus 4. If you're trying to determine whether lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither, and I'm just going to write those three options out, parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Those are my three options. Oops, that's not how you spell neither. Those are my three options. I need to determine if these two lines are one of these, and one of these must apply. They're either parallel, perpendicular, or they're neither. All right, to do that, you have to compare slopes. So luckily, these two lines are already in y equals mx plus b. They're already in slope intercept form. They both have y isolated. So you can see the slope of this first line. Let's uh, box that in red. The slope of this line is negative 3. The slope of this line is 1 third. Um, remember from the last side, parallel lines have the same slope. Well, these are obviously not the same number. Perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite signs and reciprocals. These two numbers fit that. One's negative, one's positive, and three and one third are reciprocals. So these are opposite reciprocals. So that means these two lines are perpendicular. So that's going to be my option. And I'm going to circle that in blue. These two lines are perpendicular. Example 13, let's scroll up maybe, is the same type of question. Determine if the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So I'm going to write those options out again. Parallel, perpendicular, or neither. 
All right, the two lines are, okay, line one is y equals 2x plus 1 half. Line two, however, says negative 6x plus 3y equals 15. All right, to determine parallel, perpendicular, or neither, we have to compare slopes. Now this line already in y equals mx plus b so I can see the slope let's go ahead and let's go ahead and box the slope for this line is 2 however this line is not in y equals mx plus b so my first step is going to have to be to put it in y equals mx plus b so I can see the slope so I need to isolate this y so let's go ahead and do that first thing you do move the x term to the other side and don't forget it changes signs when you do that so we're going to end up with 3 y equals a positive 6x plus 15. Then we need to divide by that 3, get that off of there, and now we have y equals 2x plus 5. And now we can see what the slope is because this is in y equals mx plus b now, that the slope is also 2. All right, for lines to be parallel, they have to have the same slope. These lines both have a slope of 2, so these lines are parallel. So I'm going to box that answer. All right, example 14 is at the top of page 26. Same type of question. Determine if the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So again, I'm going to write those options over here. Parallel perpendicular or neither. Alright, the first line is negative 4x plus y equals negative 2. The second line, I'm leaving some space here because I know we're going to do something with that, is negative x plus 4y equals 3. All right, to figure out whether lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither, we have to compare slopes. These two lines are not in slope-intercept form. They do not say y equals mx plus b. We need to isolate the y for both of these lines. So the first thing we do is put that x term to the other side, and that's going to give us y equals positive 4x minus 2, and we're good now we can see the slope for this line is 4. Uh, if we do that on this second line, the x term goes to the other side. We have 4y equals positive x plus 3. Then we have to divide by 4. That gives us y equals. All right, now be careful with this because I, I see a lot of students making this mistake. This is not 4x. This has an invisible 1 here. This fraction is 1 fourth, not 4. So this is 1 fourth x plus 3 fourths. And our slope is 1 fourth. So now we can compare. Once we have them in y equals mx plus b, are these lines parallel? Parallel lines have the same slope. These are not the same number. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Now, 4 and 1 fourth are reciprocals, but they are not opposite also. They have to have opposite signs. One has to be positive and one negative, and it doesn't matter which one, but they have to have one positive and one negative. So these don't fit perpendicular either. If it doesn't fit parallel and it doesn't fit perpendicular, then it must be neither. All right, on to example 15 which is on the bottom of page 26. We're being asked to graph this line, y equals 3 fifths x minus 2, using the slope and the y-intercept, and those are specific directions. Well, we know the slope is here. So the slope is a positive 3 fifths, and because it's positive, we know this line has to go uphill, and we know this is the y-coordinate for the y-intercept. Don't forget the x is 0. 
So once I have that information, I can draw a graph. So I'm going to sketch this graph over here. I'm going to try to do this as neatly as possible, guys. This is not the easiest tool to work with here. All right, when you're graphing using the slope and the y-intercept, the first thing you put on your graph is the y-intercept. It's the only point that you know at the beginning that is actually on your graph. So I'm going to put that in, in blue. 0, negative 2 is down here. Okay, And then you use your slope number as rise and run. Don't forget, this is rise over run to count. Okay. So you can count rise, and you can count up, or you can count down. I have more room to go up, so I'm going to count rise up. The rise is 3, so 1, 2, that 0 counts as 2, 3. That puts me at positive 1 here. Okay, and then I'm going to count 5 as the run, so the run goes horizontally. Rise goes vertical, run goes horizontal. Now, which way does the run go? Does it go left, or does it go right? So imagine this. This is why I drew this little guide right here. I know this line has to go uphill. So if I run this way, my, my line is going to go this way and be going downhill. So I know I need to run this way so that when I connect the dots, this goes uphill. So the rise is 3, 1, 2, 3, the run is 5. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm going to put a point right there. I just need to get the pen out here. Now I'm going to connect the dots. And don't forget your arrows. You have to have arrows on your lines. And that will be a graph of this equation. Slope of 3 fifths, y-intercept at 0, negative 2. All right, example 16, which is on the top of page 27. Ask us to graph the line 4x plus 3y equals 9 using the slope and the y-intercept. Now, I know that a different method might be faster, but the directions specifically say use the slope and the y-intercept. In order to find the slope and the y-intercept for this equation, we have to put it in slope-intercept form or y equals mx plus b. So we need to isolate this y. First thing, put this x to the other side, and that will be now 3y equals negative 4x plus 9, and then divide off this 3. So we end up with y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 3. Now that we're in slope-intercept form, we can find our slope. Don't forget, the slope is right here, negative 4 thirds. Since this is a negative slope, we know this line needs to go downhill and we can see our y-intercept. Don't forget there's a 0 for x and the y-coordinate is here. Now we're going to try to sketch this graph. Um, I'm, again, I'm sorry if it's not the neatest thing. I'm trying to be as neat as possible on this tool. graph using the slope and the y-intercept, the first thing you put on your graph is your y-intercept. It's the only point that you know for sure is on the graph when you start. So 0, 3 is up here. And then you count the slope. You've got a rise and a run. Now when you count the rise, you can go up. The rise is vertical. You could go up, but I don't have really enough room to go up here. I'm going to go down because just because I have a lot more room here. And then when you count the run, you're going to go horizontal. And again, it matters. That's why I draw these little guides. I know this line has to go like this. So my next point needs to be over in this area somewhere. If I go the wrong way, the line will be going uphill and it won't be a negative slope. So let's do rise of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That puts me here. And run of 3 
one, two, three. I need to go that direction, and I so I need to put a point here. There. And then I need to connect the dots. And you should actually hit the dots when you connect them. That's better. Don't forget your arrows. If you're in my class, I'll tell you this right now. If you leave arrows off, you will not get full credit. These lines must have arrows on them, so make sure you put them on. All right, that seems to be the end of this section. Um, you've got homework starting on the next page. I will see you in class.